Hello, Daniel De La Vega. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming on. How are you? Nice to meet you as well. Thank you for having me. So, um, so Daniel, I'd love it if maybe you could just uh, take a second to tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Great, of course. So I grew up in Miami, Cuban parents. Uh, my De La Vega is my mother. We started One Sotheby's International Realty in 2008 together, and I am now the president of One Sotheby's International Realty. And I have another side of me that's equally as important as my presidency here at the company, which is my family, uh, my wife, Veronica, and my three kids who allow me to have that balance in life, which everybody needs. Yeah, that's great. And, and by the way, your mom was great. You got a lot. You, you got uh, some big shoes to fill on this one. Buddy. Definitely. definitely. <laughs> so, um, so, Daniel, obviously, um, this series is focused on how the luxury marketplace and consumers have been evolving over the past handful of years. And I'd love to get your perspective on that, especially since I think you can provide some really important global nuances and insights. Yeah, so the luxury space has definitely evolved a lot more post-COVID than it did pre-COVID. I think that what's what's exacerbated this movement really is the way people live and and luxury not so much being a price point but more of a lifestyle yeah and that lifestyle is really relative to the eye of the beholder right so when we sell a condominium and we sell the saint regis residences for example that's a north of two thousand dollar a foot product on brickell avenue in miami that's luxury. I mean, that is right. The epitome of luxury, right, right. Robert Amstern design, Rockwell interiors, and, and it's, it's the best of the best. And then we have other developments in other parts of, of Miami that are also branded residences and are also luxury. I mean, we're doing eight townhouses right now in Surfside and they're right at the entrance of Surfside on 8,800 Collins. And that's also luxury. It may not be as well of a recognized brand or architect, but it's luxury, right? It's luxury right. because you can walk to the beach because you can walk to the surf club. And it's really, you know, it's more of a lifestyle than a price point. And I think that that's what's and how it's evolved the most, right? And people are looking for uh, more amenities within their lifestyles now post pandemic because they're just spending more times at their houses. So mm -hmm. it's evolved into something pretty cool. And the way we're curating buildings, curating homes and, and, and all that is really what's what's um, what's changed the most for us because we're thinking about what is luxury for that for that consumer now. And have you seen that, Daniel, globally as well? This this kind of shift has is it? I mean, in your travels, are you noticing that that is that it's similar? Is there a difference globally? Is there a, a nuance there? You know, I haven't traveled as much post pandemic. I used to travel a lot. I used to go to Brazil for two days. I was in Europe. I was all over and. Mm. I, I am not traveling as much. I mean, they just lifted the travel restrictions, so we're starting to travel a little bit more domestically, right. but I haven't seen them. I will tell you that I spoke to somebody yesterday from Spain, and we were talking about the market uh, in the Balearic Islands and different parts of Spain and Madrid specifically, and, and there's a lot of very similar trends, right? When you look at homes and you look at condominiums, people are just looking for certain things. They're looking for outdoor kitchens. They're looking for dens. They're looking for more wellness oriented components within their lifestyle and that for us has been a big big mover i mean we just sold out or, or five units left at a very high-end luxury building in coral gables called villa valencia <laughs> and there is a wellness component which includes uh circadian lighting and uh, you know, the, the, the drapes open at a certain time so that you get natural lights when you come in and, and, and all of the water filtration throughout the whole building is filtered. So that kind of wellness is, is, is really a huge selling point here and something that people are looking for as, and, and more than looking for it, they're somewhat expecting it in today's market. So I'm seeing those changes not only here and based on what I'm hearing from other markets and conversations that I'm having in Europe and, and, and South America, Primarily, we're, people are requesting that as well. Br Br Brazil actually is another market that I spoke to uh, some friends. They were doing the de facto towers in Sao Paulo, and they were telling me that all those same components, wellness, dens, outdoor <laughs> living, larger spaces, is what people are looking for as well.
Yeah, that's great. Good to know. And, and so, Daniel, before we started recording this, I was doing a little bit of research, and I and I noticed that um, there's this unique strategy that's being implemented in the luxury real estate market, which is, and you kind of mentioned this rather quickly, but it's which is branded residences. And I'm wondering if you could talk a bit about that. Maybe tell us things like, first of all, what what they are, and then maybe give us some examples of branded properties. And of course, we'd love to know who is buying them and why they're so appealing to that buyer. So branded residence is something that, at least in South Florida, started recently. I mean, we've had some really great architects that have worked on different buildings throughout the cities. But really, you know, the, the, the Richard Myers at the Surf Club, the Zaha Hadid at 1000 Museum, the now St. Regis um, residences on Brickell really elevate the stature of the building in many ways. I mean, beginning with architecture, right? So whether if it's a hotel brand and they have minimum requirements on the interiors, like marbles all throughout at the St. Regis, or it's, you know, the, the plaster and the way they imported, you know, certain products from Dubai just to build Zaha's building or, you know, the old with the new, right? Which is what you see in the surf club with Richard Meyer, right? All those components are new to our markets and they're really cool components for many different aspects of these developments, interiors, exteriors, spaces, how you use them. And these architects are so creative. I mean, they're Pritzker Prize winning architects, right? They're some of the best in the world. Sure. So for us, it's really elevated our city. It's, it's you know, become a world-class city because of the architecture that you're seeing. And again, like I said earlier, right? It, it's it's not so much that people want it, it's almost now that people expect it, right? So as we're looking at different developments throughout the city and launching new projects, we're working almost with five new projects and all of them want to talk about branded residences because people <laughs> just want it. I mean, they just want it, they like it, they love it, they want to live in it, they're proud of it, right? They want to talk to their friends and say, I live in the Zaha building or right. I live in the new St. Regis residences and guess what? There hasn't been a new building on Brickell Avenue, the old historic Brickell Avenue in 20 plus years since the, since the Santa Maria and the Bristol, which are the two nicest towers um, that that preceded the, uh, the St. Regis, but now they're going to say, well, I'm on the St. Regis in Brickell, right? And that's the best of the best. And it's not only the best because of the building and the architect and the interior designer, it's the best because of the branded residences, right? The St. Regis. And there's other great brands in the market, but that's just sort of the epitome of luxury brands right now, the St. Regis. And quite frankly, John, when you go and you get immersed into these brands like I did and I went to New York City and you see, you know, the Tiffany room or the Dior room in the St. Regis right, right off the Fifth Avenue, I mean, it's impressive the work that they put into this and more importantly, the detail. I remember the concierge that was there. He was a little bit late to our meeting and and somebody said, hey, you're late. They were busting his chops a little bit. He said, well, I'm late because I had to run to Nike. They opened up at 8 a.m. I came back. I had to get one of our clients their running shoes. And then actually she was jogging alone in 40 degree weather and she didn't want to jog alone. And I went for a jog with her. So that's service. <laughs> and it's a true story. I mean, that's service. That's, that's what you get in these, some of these buildings or, you know, a lot of these luxury buildings. And it's and it's again, it's it's somewhat expected in today's market, and we're happy to deliver that kind of product. So, so this is interesting, I, and I, I have to tell you, I mean, I, I ask all the guests that come on here uh, what I call my crystal ball question. I ask that at the very end, and, and basically what I'm saying to them is, I'm asking them to give us their predictions for what's coming in the luxury marketplace, and you know, some of them mention the metaverse as something that's coming, but. I'm actually looking at a Profile Miami article that's dated January 10th, where you're already building the first ever mansion in the metaverse. So while the metaverse is the the future for some people, it's obviously now for you. So so I uh, while I can't wait to get to that crystal ball question, because I, I can't even imagine what you're going to have to say about that. But before I get to that, I, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that project. Yeah, so that's that's actually the project that's keeping me up at night right now. I mean, our our day to day business keeps me up at night. Definitely, we've had a lot of sleepless nights as we've grown this company, but this is what keeps me up at night because it's so exciting. And for me, it's the future of real estate, right? And the way I see it is that we'll eventually all live on the metaverse, experience on the metaverse, and do so many things on the metaverse that are unimaginable. And it's funny because I, I sometimes joke with my wife or she jokes with me. I don't know if she's 
quite frankly, joking, but she's like, yeah, you know, that project that you're doing, I don't, I don't like it because I don't want to live on the metaverse. And I'm just like, listen, you got to get on the bus quickly because right. if not, the bus is going to leave you. So it's, you know, it's an experience center is what it is. And for us, we want to create that experience for real estate agents throughout really the United States and the world so that they can do better. Right. My job has always been to make real estate agents better. I wake up in the morning to try to make real estate agents better. My team wakes up in the morning and all we talk about is strategizing and on how to make the real estate agents better. So I have a vision on the metaverse where real estate agents are going to spend a lot more time with their clients within this experience, within experience centers that are going to be the future of real estate offices. And they're going to see property in a much more efficient and timely manner. And it's not to say that they're not going to go see real estate in real life because real life life is real life and it's not going anywhere, um, but they're going to be able to be more efficient and more effective because of the metaverse, right? So uh, essentially what we're doing though is we're building the first one-to-one -one home in real life and on the metaverse, right? Believe it or not, and I was shocked when I partnered with with my partner on this and I said, really? What we're doing is, is, is that cool? It's that different? And he's like, Daniel, you don't understand. Like this is the first one-to-one -one home in the world. So we're building a house both in real life in one of the most affluent luxury luxury communities in uh, South Florida, and we're building that same exact home on the metaverse, right? And we've partnered with Voxel Architects, which is probably the most prominent architecture firm on the metaverse, um, to help us build the home through their software, which is Voxel Edit. Um, well, actually, through through Sandbox's software, Voxel Edit, and I should have started by saying we're building the home on the Sandbox, right. which I think is the most progressive metaverse out there. Everybody loves it. I mean, Adidas has an incredible plot of land, and they're doing some really cool stuff. And I think Gucci just bought some property on there, so they can do their experience. I think Snoop, there. Dog, doesn't Snoop Dogg Snoop, on it. <laughs> Snoop Dogg, we're right by Snoop Dogg. So there you also, go. <laughs> yeah, we also bought land, right? We bought a, a pretty significant amount of land on the metaverse so that when this project works, it, we can continue to develop and create these experience centers for real estate like I talked about earlier. Yeah. And two other really cool factors, right? Number one, the sandbox themselves, right, have, have officially partnered with us, that, right? That's one Sotheby's International Realty uh, and MetaRes1, at MetaRes1 on Twitter. You should follow them. I mean, they, they really are putting out some great stuff. I just retweet them all the time with all the great <laughs> They put out, but we're partners with Sandbox and we're going to sell the home as an NFT. We don't have a price, but we're doing a community sale, which is going to be really cool. We're involving, um, of course, crypto. We're involving, you know, platforms on, on, you know, where to sell it. We hope to do something with OpenSea, which is one of the more prominent platforms out there. We're doing something with uh, art, music, furniture, and all of it will be NFTs and part of the sale as a big community. So, you know, a big wag me to everybody out there in the uh, in the crypto community. The native know what I'm talking about. So, so well, well, like when you say that to your, like, for example, when you say that to your wife and you say, you know, you got to get on that, you know, you got to get on the bus. John, she thinks I'm nuts. But, you know, <laughs> you know what I tell her, you know what I tell her? I say, listen, let, let, let me explain this to you in real life, right? Which, which will be your real life. You're going to be, you know, in Chanel, okay? You're going to you're going to be in Chanel through VR, right? Some sort of VR and then the AR component's going to kick in and you're going to be walking through Chanel and you're going to feel like you're inside of Chanel. And when you're inside of Chanel, you're going to be able to walk around, you're going to see salespeople, you're going to be in your avatar and your avatar is going to be dressed up. You're going to have whatever it is that you like to wear that you're going to buy in real life. You're going to also be able to buy it in your avatar you're going to see one of your friends in chanel and you're going to say hey how are you you guys are going to be able to communicate <laughs> by the way you're also going to be able to invite your friend from dubai that you haven't seen in years to meet you in chanel you're going to see what she has on you guys are going to walk through the shop things are going to pop out at you whether it's shoes or bags or clothes you're going to be able to click on that and you're going to be able to buy it and it's going to be on your doorstep and again you're going to be able to wear it as 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 you know your avatar or your avatar is going to be able to wear it and by the way from there you guys haven't seen each other in years your friend from dubai you're going to say oh did you hear about the kaigo concert that's going on kaigo is actually spinning in the metaverse but while he's in la or in new york or wherever he is 
and you guys are going to be able to teleport together, change before you go into your cooler outfit, right? To get into the concert, etc. You're going to pay for tickets, which are going to be X amount of dollars. And then you guys are going to be able to enjoy a live concert like you were in real life, listening to Kygo, but in the metaverse, and he's actually spinning. So when I when I put it that way, she's kind of like, hmm, oh, I kind of get it a little bit more. <laughs> right. I, I, well, I love how you explained it. But, but here's what I'd love to know. Wait, you're saying that to your, you know, to your wife and you're explaining it. And, and you did say that, you know, one of your goals is to make agents better. I mean, what is your, are, are, are some agents pushing back on this? Do they not understand it? How do you get, how do you get the agents on, on that bus, so to speak? Well, I, I think most agents think the way I think. Agents are entrepreneurs at heart, yep. and that's why I love them so much. They're very creative, and, and they really just they, they just get it. And yep. honestly, most of the ones that I've spoken to get it. And if they don't get it like I didn't get it, they want to know it. And I do my best of explaining yep. it. But most of the time, I bring in my partner, Gabe Sierra, uh, to really explain it to them in more detail because – Quite frankly, it's it's a lot to grasp. It yeah, really it is. is a lot to grasp, and and it's, you know, something that is 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 going to change the way we live and the way we do business. And some people are a bit resistant to that, and some people don't like the concept of, you know, more internet, right? Because it's like internet 2.0, right? And that's why 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 Meta is doing what it's doing because they're seeing this as revolutionizing the internet, not just revolutionizing social media. Yeah. Right? And and it's and it's something that's it's not evolutionary, it's revolutionary. And there's a difference between those two adjectives, right? So I think that, you know, the agents are traditionally uh they 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 think very evolutionary. Um, but now, you know, you want them to think a little bit more like revolutionary, yeah, right? Like yeah, this is like point. something that's going to change the world and, you know, our kids forever. So let's just jump on the train. And quite frankly, when you tell them you don't have to drive around Miami Beach or <laughs> Pinecrest or downtown Miami with the horrible public transportation systems that we have here in South Florida, and you're able to just show real estate in an experience center with a butler and coffee and uh, you know, Bloody Marys if, if it's after five and just see the same real estate and really great detail and then go see your two favorite homes. They love the concept of that. It's just ultimately going to save people more time. And I think that as you see things transition, that's ultimately at the core of what everybody wants to do with technology. They want to save people more time. Yeah. And I think that's it's, it's a great point and it transfers over because obviously we're going to have a lot of agents listening to this, but there's a lot of people who are going to be listening to this that are just interested in this evolution of the luxury market. And it sounds like your advice to them would be, hey, look, get on this, start understanding this now. Yep. 100%. So, like I mentioned, I mean, I ask all the guests who come on here to take out their crystal ball and make some predictions for the future about how they see the luxury market evolving in the next few years. And like I said, a lot of them talk about something that you're already doing now. So they, uh, we've been hearing all about NFTs and metaverse and crypto. So what are some things that you think our listeners should be keeping an eye on? No, look, I, I go back to my 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 comment on luxury not being a price point, but rather a lifestyle. And I see the metaverse as a major lifestyle for the future of how we're going to live. And maybe it's not immediately the metaverse, because I think the metaverse is still five to seven years out. I know yeah. that, you know, even meta through their horizon, their their platform, they're reaching a lot of of um, roadblocks and, and they're having a lot of trouble in developing exactly what it is that they want. So we are still five to seven years out from really, I think, developing, even maybe 10, developing something really expansive. But I think that, um, so how, when I say it, it's not a it's not a price point, it's, it's a lifestyle, like being able to show real estate on the metaverse and gain all that time so you can spend it with your family or doing other things, I mean, that's a luxury, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's a huge luxury for real estate agents. So, you know, that's how I see the market evolving and, and, and technologies like this helping us, you know, live that better lifestyle. And better is very relevant, right? Like better is just, I said earlier, it's in the eye of the beholder, but mm -hmm. being better or having more balance or being able to spend more time with your family or living in more wellness oriented environments that's a luxury in itself. So however these things evolve and whatever it is that it allows us to do more of, those things I just mentioned, is really the luxury of the future. So I think that we'll see more wellness, we'll see more 
work from home. We'll see more um, efficiencies in, in, in how we show real estate and, you know, we'll be able to balance our lives and spend more time with our family. And that in itself is the luxury. And yeah. I think that that ultimately is the, uh, the luxury of the, the, the future of luxury. That's, that's, that's a great point. I mean, interestingly enough, a few episodes ago, we spoke to um, the CEO of, of a company called Jetit, Glenn Gonzalez, who, who kind of summed it up by saying, look, time is luxury. Yeah. I've read on him. He's a brilliant man. I'm glad uh, we were able to get him on. And, and, and if he's listening, a big thank you. But, you know, it's, it's definitely about our time, right? And that yep. kind of is what I was talking about. Yeah. Well, Daniel, this was great. Thanks so much for coming on and doing this amazing it was it was so amazing i hope that we can continue to add value and 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 you know just provide thought-provoking insights that can get people to sort of think outside of the box a little bit and be creative and you know be more open to to ideas and to people because ultimately that's what will define everybody yeah great point and and for all of you listening out there Remember, this podcast is brought to you by One Sotheby's International Realty, who brings the unique lifestyle of Florida's East Coast from Miami to Cocoa Village to the world. So be sure to explore some of the world's more inspiring homes at onesotheby'srealty.com. Thanks again, Daniel, and thanks everyone for listening.